Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. This is the way. We want it men. Smugglers Galaxy Podcast. This is episode number 26. Uh, I'm Glenn Williams. With me, as always, is Jason with Soko. Jason, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great on my new microphone here. Dude, it sounds so nice. How's it going, everyone? <laughs> no more buzzing. No more buzzing. So yay. Yay for me and yay for you. We all win. Yes. Cool. We could sound like a professional podcast now. Yeah, we are. We are. We have to tell ourselves we are a professional podcast. Yes. But yeah. You know, so, so uh, do you want me to just jump in or jump in, dude? I because, I, like we said last week, I never know how to start these things. The small talk is just kind of awkward and <laughs> forced, and <laughs> but I'm out of my self-imposed spending quarantine, and I got a bonus. I was blessed to get a bonus, a little bit more than I anticipated. So that's why, first of all, I have the new microphone. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. But I was able to pick up some pieces from Narayan. I have a micro micro machine master collection master collector set. And I guess it was only available at Toys R Us. I have it right here in front of me. It's got a 40 different vehicles in it. Um, a couple of them I actually don't have, like the Outrider from Shadows of the Empire. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. I got that set. And then oh, I picked up. Did you ever see their X-ray fleet that they did? Yeah. So this was a JC Penney's exclusive with the Imperial shuttle in it. And it comes with a, a see-through version and a painted version. And I don't know if I've ever seen these painted before. So they're, so they're like X-ray, but they're painted? Yes. Yeah. So it's all the X-ray fig um figures, all the X-ray vehicles, and they're painted. So, except for the Imperial Shuttle, there's two of them. One that's X-Ray and one that's not. And so that was pretty cool. I've never seen it before, so pretty stoked about that. And then I got the Purge Trooper Black Series. (laughs) So this is the um, Purge Trooper that was initially released during... It was like a set. You you would have to order Jedi Fallen Order plus the Purge Trooper. And I didn't pre-order it. Mm -hmm. So I never got the Purge Trooper. And they only shipped enough to stores that they needed. So if there was three people in the store that got the the pack, the game, and the figure, that's how many they sent. There was a few rare occasions when someone didn't pick it up and they just sold it. And they refunded the money, I guess, to the person. They just sold it to people who came in and asked for it. And then they re they so they restocked it and I, I got one so I'm excited about that. Awesome. And then <laughs> how much shit did you get? <laughs> well, I sold off all my Masters of the Universe. Oh, stuff. okay. I remember you telling me you were gonna do that, so you actually did it. So I did it. I got rid of that. I had a bunch of old like Batman. Um, what else was in there? A couple Ninja Turtles, but they were more modern Ninja Turtles, like. There were re-releases of the original, but they have the hard heads. And I think if you're a Ninja Turtle fan, you'll know what I'm talking about there. But there were some of those. And so I got rid of all that stuff. And I bought Snice Noodles, Max Rebo, and um, oh, what's his face? Droopy McCool. How are the Force versions to put on my cell barge? Nice. They're all open. And I got them from Second Chance Toys, which is, again, an awesome shop. Right. Did you uh, trade your stuff in with them? Yes, I traded some stuff in and um, I traded in last week and I thought about it today. I went back and I grabbed 
these the trio for my solo barge. Awesome. And that's it so far. <laughs> so far. It's always fun when you get rid of stuff and you have cash and it burns a hole in your pocket. Yeah, I probably should save it for Toy Lanta. Yeah. And then there's IC like two weeks after that. It's going to be a crazy March in April, dude. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be awesome, though. Um, did you grab anything? The only thing, well, I did grab, it's not here yet because it's coming from China. I got a uh, Galactic Heroes prototype, um, the guy with all the, from Clone Wars with all the uh, tentacles, the Jedi. It fits, though. Yeah, him. So that's, I don't know when that, you know, you know how shipping is. It's supposed to be here at the end of March, but mm. it may be here sooner. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. And then my wife at Christmas time, somebody had made like this Mando, uh, Mandalorian Bantha skull, Bantha skull for the old fuckers like us, Mythostore skull for all you new people, uh, depending on what, where you come from. But the Bo- Boba Fett. Uh, bantha skull somebody had done a piece of woodwork and it is basically looked like he took well it is it's one piece of wood and he like carved it all out uh and it's like 11 by 14 11 by 17 um she had saw it at christmas time and was contemplating getting it and then i guess the guy sent her a uh an offer or whatever so she's like you know what i've been sitting on it this long she already missed out on another piece of art a year or two ago where it was um almost a burt reynolds C-3PO and R2-D2. So Burt Reynolds was in like, I mean, Burt Reynolds, R2-D2 was like, had a six pack and in underwear and like was in this sexy pose. It was, it was really, it was like a guy with a C-3PO head on. So it was, it was kind of disturbing, but cool at the same time, like a car wreck on the interstate, you know, <laughs> that's disturbing. That- that's a disturbing analogy. If I may it, say so. It was really bad. And, um, uh, she missed out on it because I think she wanted to get it for Blake because he likes C-3PO. <laughs> and so she picked this up and that came in a couple of days ago. And then I got some, um, while we were at Second Chance last weekend, there's a game, um, Galac- I think it's called Star Wars Galaxy, but it looks like a role-playing game for little mm-hmm. kids. Um, and they had a Rebels pack and there was a Phantom that they had and that was sitting at Second Chance Toys. And I didn't know about, I knew it, had to do with the game but i couldn't remember it at the time and as later she was looking through ebay and found the ghost they're really cool because they're unpainted uh so they look like they could be prototypes but you know for for the money it was just it was stupid to pass them up right but yeah how many times have you been to second chance toys because it sounds like you've been a lot i mean three okay three or four i think it's three we did run into each other last Saturday. That was a, that was a good trip there. It was because uh, right as I walk, I walked in and I saw Dutch from Toy Lana, and he was with one of his buddies uh, that I can't, I know the guy, but I can't remember his name. Uh, and then as soon as I was there, Martin walks in from Toy Lana, and like a whole Toy Lana crew walked in, and then I see your wife, and I'm like, wait a minute, that means Jason's here, and there you are mm-hmm. around the corner, and the store was packed, and you know it was just. It was a good feeling um, just seeing a store like that. And the, the owner was just in awe because he had 20, 30 people. Uh, you know, he had a store full of people. He's like, I've only been open for a couple of weeks. This is great. Uh, we got to talk to him for, for a minute. Um, my wife picked up some some um, random ET stuff, uh, some ADATs. We actually picked up a, uh, I picked up a micro collection Wampa. I picked up an Action Fleet Wampa. She picked up a couple of AT-ATs from the Action Fleet um, line and some ET, random ET stuff that she didn't have. And uh, we just, you know, got to know the owner a little bit better. And then as we're leaving, Jason TK walks in. Mm -hmm. So it was just a fun, uh, you know, I walked out of there with a, you know, just a stupid grin on my face because it was, you know, the feeling that we've missed for a year and a half, you know, the last year you had that community feel again. Um, So it was great. Yeah. When my, when we left after we saw you, we got back home. My wife said something like, you know, it was good to see people again. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's where we are, I guess, in quarantine where we're just sick of our, each other's faces and it's good to see other people. Yeah. 
can't wait to get back there. Yeah, but I'm, I'm hoping that store does good because they they're good people uh, that are running it. Uh, the guy's name it's, it's Daniel. Is the dad? Is it right, Daniel? I think so. Started with a D. I can't remember, but the son's name's Chance, so that's easy yep. to remember. Second chance. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, those are good guys. So check them out. Oh, and then I sent something to Singapore like five months ago. I had I, I had got one of the Coca Cola shirts from the um, Galaxy's Edge panel. Yeah, and it was just sitting in a closet, and I was like, eh, it was cool to have, but I'd rather have something else. So I had sold it on Deal or No Deal, and a guy that won it was in Singapore. So I ship, shipped it out to him, and we were both. He was he was cool because I you know it, it ended up going through Berlin and it it went all over the place and he finally messaged me last week saying it finally made it to Singapore after five months. Gosh. <clears throat> That's insane. Yeah. That is a long time to wait for a shirt. Right. But he got it and everything looks good. So, good. you know, knock on wood. <laughs> it worked. Well, he, yeah. He's got it. So mm-hmm. that nightmare is over. Right. At least for him. Cause I don't like shipping stuff overseas but i know once i do i'm like once it's out of my hands I- i'm sorry i can't take you know yeah it's on you right no it's just part of the process right there's never had something take that long mm-hmm. welcome to covid i guess yeah backing everything up yeah you got any uh fun news this week yeah there's um by the time this is released it'll be too late but mark Engelt englert he uh, has these 12 by 36 screen prints that he does. I have two of them, and I'm still debating if, if I'm getting this one. It's the Mandalorian. It's like super widescreen. It's Ahsoka with the child kind of sending the um the little knob shift, I guess. Not the knob shift. Was it a rock or something like that? It's the scene from the Mandalorian. It's called There Aren't Many Jedi Left. Okay. And I'm, gotta... I'm debating. Where is this at? Who, who did it's this? Uh, Bottleneck Gallery. Okay. Yeah, th- that that stuff always sells out fast. But this one is a timed edition, and we have until Sunday, so I'm still like humming and hawing. I'm sure this is going to be a last minute thing. I'm just going to do it. Right. Do it. But do it. Yes. Oh, do and it. it glows in the dark. It does. It shows the the scene when Ahsoka is fighting fighting the. She's not a marshal. Oh, okay. The lady that's in charge of that whole fort fortress mm-hmm. or whatever they're fighting when it glows in the dark that's really cool you've got a couple of stuff some other things by him don't you yes yeah i have uh what is that piece called there, well there's one on on dagobah with yoda lifting the x-wing which is one of my all-time favorite scenes in star wars followed by i'm here to rescue you that's the name of the piece and it's luke looking off on the setting suns and r2d2 is kind of in the bottom corner just running off like you don't you have to get really, really close to see that he's running off to try to find Obi-Wan Kenobi. And when it glows in the dark, it shows Luke and uh, Luke in front of the um, Darth Vader's funeral fire pyre. What do you want to call that? Yeah, when he sets, close yeah, enough. Yeah, so funeral pyre. Whatever. But and then you can kind of see the Imperial shuttle and everything. So I have a couple of his pieces and I'm like, I think I like these widescreen pieces and I think I'm going to as I'm talking, <laughs> I'm convincing <laughs> there, myself that I'm going to be buying it soon. You're right. That's a cool piece. And it's not that bad. 50 bucks for, you know, a, a nice. Oh, and it's screen printed. It, oh, yeah. screen printed with the glow in the dark ink. All right. Yeah. For what it is, it's it's I don't think it's that bad of a price. No. Yeah. So I think I might pick that up. <clears throat> we'll see. Right. So this week, uh, Hasbro released the Black Series Wrecker figure from bad batch he's kind of the muscle of the group the tough guy uh-huh. he's 29 dollars. he's already sold out on hasbro pulse of course i pre-ordered him <laughs> i was one of the lucky ones who got it in the in the 10 minutes that he was available jesus the crazy thing is and and this is my marketing brain i'm glad they didn't do this but the um hasbro pulse membership expires for most people because we were part of the initial wave i guess it expires march 1st Mm -hmm. and so it's 50 bucks you get free shipping and like if you order three things throughout the year it's worth it 
with all the pre-ordering that I'm doing, and I, of course I'm going to get the fifty dollars. But why? Or of course I'm going to spend the fifty dollars. But not. But why not wait until March first to offer these and force people to buy it? Because you know, as of right now, I, I was able to buy Wrecker and get the free shipping. Right. Maybe you know Hasbro Pulse isn't all that evil. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe there's a schedule that we don't know about. <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's a quota that they have to hit every month. I don't know. Speculation. And right. then they also released the new Black Series First Order helmet, which is 99 bucks. Yeah. I, I'm, I like those helmets. Um, I've got a few of them, but I just had to stop because, uh, you know, 100 bucks every time that helmet comes out can get expensive. And to display them, it, it gets kind of hard. Yeah, because I want the Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett. I want the repainted Boba Fett. I can skip the prototype Boba Fett, and I also want the Mandalorian, but, I mean, those are all 120 bucks each, and I haven't ordered any of them yet. So this one would be an easy skip for me, but I, I will say that I do like... I think one of the, the things that the sequel trilogy nailed uh, is the design of the, the Stormtroopers. Mm -hmm. I think um, it, it kind of looks like Apple redesigned the Stormtrooper in a way because <laughs> it's so sleek and modern. Uh -huh. So... But yeah, it's an easy skip for me. Yeah. And then and then they also, this was kind of confusing because they had a fan celebration day and they were going to announce all these different exclusives through like six different online websites like Jedi Business, Rebel Scum, Bantha, Tra Bantha Tracks, Fanta Tracks, whatever the website is. I'm sorry, it's escaping my mind. So I thought we were going to get like six different figures and each site was going to get their own figure, but it ended up, ended up being everyone was announcing the same two figures. IG-11 and the Lando Calrissian from Empire Strikes Back are coming to the vintage collection. Right. They look great. I can't wait to get my hands on IG-11 because I love that character. This one looks like the knees bin, whereas the Black Series, they didn't bend, right? The IG-11? Yeah. I don't know, because I don't open them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. but it really, I, I just, I, I see all these figures, and I see these people that pose them, and they do all these crazy poses with them, and I can't even get mine to stand up straight. <laughs> you yeah. know, I don't even put a pose on mine, and, and it just, it's frustrating, and I guess I'm not that creative to, to get crazy with all these, the poses and stuff. Yeah, I don't know how they do it if they disguise stands in dirt or grass or I, I just don't know. Right. And and it makes it even more difficult when you're trying to find stands for these. The uh the peg holes are all different. So each yeah. series they change the size of the peg holes. Because I had bought some stands uh thinking they would work. And I had, you know, the guy was good, you know. It, I bought him from Ian Sanderson before I realized who Ian was. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, because it was my first real purchase from him. And, you know, he was cool. He was like, dude, I'll send you your money back, you know, just, you know, but I'd ended up just uh, trimming them down with a mm. nail file. And yeah, they work, but it, it's just frustrating when you, when you see that they don't, you know, keep something standard. For the summer social, I tried to animate the Black Series Mandalorian and Boba Fett together. And I ended up just having them stand in place because I just couldn't bend their knees and get them in the position where it looked like they were walking naturally in animation. Yeah, because like you're saying, I just I can't I can't pose them. Right. Yeah, all so. mine are kind of if 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 I want to do an extreme pose, I turn them to the side <laughs> instead of having them facing you know head <laughs> That's on. Exactly what I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> turn their head, turn their body. It looks dramatic. I, I think the most creative I got, and I don't even know if I still have it like that, but I had the the Vader where the helmet came off. Yes. And there's a statue with him that has him looking at the helmet. Uh, yes. And, I, and yeah. I tried to recreate that pose. And that's the most dramatic I ever got with my six inch mm -hmm. black series figures. Yeah, it's tough. Like I have, I have the black series where it's kind of like a statue. It's Darth Vader kind of busting through the tenti, tentative five, four, whatever it was. It's a black series, but they're more sculpture like and, and it's Darth Vader with his hand out. Right. And I have one of the Rebel Fleet Troopers. 
and I'm trying, I, I tried so hard to make it look like Darth Vader was choking him. And it just looks like the guy's got his hands up. Like I surrender. <laughs> it looks horrible. Cause those elbows don't, they, I think they redid the elbows joints, but yeah, they don't, um, that you can't get them close to the face. It's very tough to pose. Yeah. But yeah, I've got that one and I've got the, uh, Luke with the ad at foot, the Luke, uh, yes. no speeder. Yep. I have that one. Yeah. I got those. Yeah. That was one of those. I got them for dirt cheap. So it's, yeah, why not? Throw them in the pile. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of skipped the rest. There was a Ray and a Kylo Ren. I do have the Ray in the Black Series. They offered it as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, like in a giant box set mm -hmm. with Kylo Ren. So I have that one, but I skipped the other ones. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah you did better than me. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once you got them and you open them up, it's like, this is cool, and they have some cool lighting effects, but... It only goes so far, you know, the, yeah. the playability is not there, the replayability or whatever. Speaking of playability, have you ever played Fortnite? No. Well, Hasbro's producing a figure line in the style of Fortnite characters. And some of those include Star Wars. Which ones are they doing? I don't know. They just, it kind of sounds like later this year, we'll learn more. Okay. Okay. But, I know they did a. I know they did a store, uh, at least a Mandalorian skin or yeah. a Star Wars skin with Fortnite. But I, I'm no good at those games, the the first person shooter games. So I I just I play them, but I don't get into them. And Fortnite to me, it just I don't know the concept. Yeah. Yeah, it's battle royale. Last person surviving wins. But I'm. That's not me. No, that's, I. That's not my game. I want to respawn. Don't kill me off, and then I'm done because that would yes. really suck. Yes. So I would I would imagine these figures are more realistic than the toy box figures that like are released through Disney Store, but they're more cartoony than Black Series. I, I think it would be somewhere in between. Okay, and I dig the toy box line. I've got the Boba Fett, mm -hmm. uh, but I never, you know, that's the, the only one I really bought. Just you know, if I'm going to collect, if I'm going to buy something, it's always Boba Fett. But yeah, and I understand why they're doing this. Like, this isn't going to be for me. This is more for the kids who play Fortnite. And I, I think this is a way to get kids collecting action figures because, let's face it, I think the industry is kind of hurting because kids like the digital skins. They don't want the figures themselves. Yeah, right. Have you um, – yeah, never mind. I, um, <laughs> just like going back to some crazy shit because I was playing with my – you know, of course, the grandkids – I've got the grandkids this weekend, so we're yeah. playing lightsabers, and we break out the dark saber. And did you realize if you have it activated and you hold down the uh, the switch – it goes into like a totally different mode. No. What does it do? It just, it sort of supercharges it. And there's another light that comes on and it, it kind of oh. just intensifies it. it. It's, I was like, huh. I'll have to try that out. Yeah. I have it right over there on my table. So it's too far to reach right now, but after this conversation, I'm going to go grab it and try and it. Use the force. It's not coming. It's not coming over here. I'm trying. <laughs> Do you still, when you walk into a grocery store, move your hand in front of the door? Silently. <laughs> <laughs> the, I was at Celebration in 17, and I caught a little kid doing that, and he kind of looked at me and, you know, was embarrassed. I'm like, dude, I still do that, and I'm like twice your age. I don't feel bad. No, I don't do it out loud because I don't <laughs> want people looking at me weird. But, I mean, why, why should I care? I should just do it. Throw my fist out. <laughs> Yeah. It open now. There you go. Shit. Oh, did you hear of a uh, Bad Batch got yes. a release date? Yes, this was the last piece of news that I had. So go ahead. Uh, let me swallow my beer. <laughs> May the 4th. This is what happens when you record in the afternoons. You can drink. Uh, May the 4th, Bad Batch, Disney Plus. Yeah, it's good. So I'm I'm excited about this. Um it's like a sequel, I think, to Clone Wars. I mean, they haven't really released a lot about the plot. We know the characters from the Clone Wars, but it does seem like it takes place after Order 66. For whatever reason, I don't think these clones had the chip inside their head. Mm -hmm. I mean, they kind of said in the show that these were enhanced clones or something along those lines. I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, I think it's about these four Super Commander clones who each have their strength and are dealing with a, a universe that no longer needs them. 
Yeah, and I, I have seen on the preview, it looked like whichever one they picked up from the last season of Clone Wars is there. So it kind of throw, you know, maybe it's after that season or maybe it's one yeah. of those where they bounce back and forth. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, but it looks I, I wasn't impressed. I wasn't excited about this till I saw the teaser and I was just, it, wow, the sizzle wheel looks amazing. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah, it just like it looks like a sequel to Clone Wars. Hopefully they've got the same kind of team working on it. So keep it going. Yeah. That's all the news that I have. Yeah, the only other thing I've got, is, and I don't know how this is going to work, and uh, it's not even a big deal, but Hasbro, Pro, Hasbro Pulse is stating that they're going to move into the UK. That's awesome for our UK listeners. Yeah. I think we have one. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think we got two. Well, UK and then France. So, okay. but I, I don't understand how. I think it's, yeah, those are different countries. I know they're different countries, but. It, Let me confirm it, that. Hold on. Let me check with Google. <laughs> yes, different countries. It still blows my mind that you know you could tra- you know the USA is like so huge, and you know we go to Mississippi, and that would be like somebody going to another country yeah. in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, because the UK, uh, not just UK, but Europe itself is right. just different. Yeah, different countries, and you know New Jersey is like Luxembourg. Or- yeah, Austria, Ken, in, uh, Kentucky's like Austria, and I think Germany's the same size as New York State. So oh, it wow. is crazy to think of it like that, right? And it still it blows my mind. Like if I go out of state, that I can wake up in the morning and just go. You don't need passports. Yeah, I don't need to tell anybody where I'm going. I just freaking get up and go. Great for our uh, UK listeners. You know, that's been a very big stick, a sticking point for a lot of collectors is that they can't get the exclusives they can't order things because you know hasbro will uh, announce it and then they'll announce some sort of partner in their their country but it's always delayed like i think there's a lot of people having trouble getting the 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 22nd anniversary phantom menace black series figures because it's a best buy exclusive here in the united states but for whatever reason they just never turned on the ordering process like in germany but I don't know. So it is a sticking point for people overseas, and I do feel their pain. They they weren't able to ever get the barge, I don't think. Right. Unless yeah, unless you did the crazy third party or whatever. Yep. One other thing, just a side note. I'm reading Light of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Is that one of the the High Republic ones? Yeah, it's the first High Republic by Charles mm-hmm. Scholl. Mm-hmm. It's an incredible book. I and I'm a slow reader. I'm like I've been reading it for about a week, week and a half. I'm a hundred pages in and that for me, yeah. it's like amazing that I can read it that fast. So it's just one of those books. It's, it's really, really fast paced. Yes. There's a lot of crap going on, but it's written really well. And it, you know, you keep up with what's going on fairly easy. It's a lot of action. I personally, I like books that have really short chapters because I, you know, I can read a chapter or two and, you know, go to bed mm-hmm. uh, where versus one that has like a 20, 30 page chapter. You're just, you're fighting to go through it. Yeah. And when you have like really short chapters, it's easier for me to read just a personal level. So I, I'm, I'm really digging it. It, it, if you like, if you haven't gotten it, go get it because it's, yeah, it's amazing because you're the, um, just hearing how the Jedi worked two, 300 years ago before everything kind of went to crap. Yeah. It, wow. You know, and there's hundreds of Jedis doing, trying to do this one task and, it's just cool. The, the writing in it is uh, really good. Um, so I can't wait to dig into more of those books. So let me ask this, because I know George Lucas, his whole thing was like the Jedi weren't supposed to be generals. They were supposed to be more like Buddhist monks who just kind of absorb the force and live with the force. They're not supposed to be warriors, so to speak. Are they warriors in this or are they more monk-like? Um, I guess if you needed a monk to go and like save a planet, type okay. stuff you know i don't they haven't seen them um battle anybody yet but they've you know um they've already it's not a spoiler because they've already released it and it, it's uh if you haven't read it i'm sorry or haven't start seen at least the prologue or whatever uh there's a starship that uh, blows up basically in hyperspace and so all you, you the more shit never mind sorry i can't 
<laughs> I'm going to spoil it. And I don't want to spoil it. All right. But uh, but yeah, basically, there's something that happens and they, they're called to save this planet. And it's just them all interacting with the force. And you've got all these force users that are interconnected. And you have this one person that's kind of guiding them all and kind of like the, the Internet for the force users. And uh, at one point, she takes her lightsaber and does something with it and it starts spinning above her head and it ignites and it's like a tool versus a weapon and there, there's several instances where the lightsaber is like uses a key to to interlock to get to this other thing that their ship does to the, these weapons so it just shows different uses of the lightsabers more than a weapon hmm. um but yeah it, it's it's a cool book i'm enjoying it and it's just cool to see stuff from from a different point of view from a certain point of view. Those are good books too. I'm going to have to look at that. Um, well, I've only read, all right, well, there's multiple topics swarming in my head right now. I'm going to have to read the High Republic books. Yes. I'll add that to the list. I'm current, currently reading the last Game of Thrones book. And that, like, I'm doing a chapter a night. And so that's going to be the next three months of my life. All right. But um, what we were just saying, oh, from a certain point of view, I have to pick up the 40th anniversary Empire version. They made that, right? Yeah, they did. That's I don't that. have that one. I've got the uh, Star Wars version. I'm about I'm about halfway through it. And, and the thing I like about that book is it's all short stories. So you can yeah. read it in between. You know, you can read it while you read another book. I will say for me personally, not all short stories were the same quality. No. Unfortunately, some of them resonated more than others. Some of them just felt silly. Um, some of them were heartbreaking, like the one on Alderaan. Oh, that one was, oh man yeah what what is your favorite uh, star wars book real quick of all time I, of all time I, and it's been years since i read them but it's just because of the 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 lore behind them is the original thrawn trilogy yeah uh and i you know it, it's probably been 20 years since i read them but i need to go back and reread them yeah um they do hold up yeah uh, and, and, and you know what? Truthfully, I got to say the High Republic book, I enjoyed more than the Thrawn, the last Thrawn book, because it just it, the Thrawn book, it, you know, it, but it's just Thrawn. Thrawn's a dry guy and yeah. it's military and it's not a whole lot of action. And, uh, you know, it's politics and crap versus the High Republic books just been balls to the wall action since, the you know, you cracked it open. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I would have to say the same. It would be Heir to the Empire, I think, for me, is my favorite Star Wars book. For a and, while the, for a while there, I would say it was uh, Shadows of the Empire, but that, that book does not hold up well. I actually bought readable copies because when I went to uh, IC in Nashville a couple of years ago, I know Timothy Zahn was there, and I, I hunted down. It took me a few months to, to get them, but I hunted down first editions, hard copy first editions of, the, of that book, that series, purpose for the purpose to get them to autograph them um and then i, I eventually found paperback so i can read the you know i could put the first editions up and then mm -hmm. reread the paperback versions mm -hmm. and i just they're there but i just haven't gotten to them maybe after i'm done with the high republic book i'll i'll get back into them um how did you track down those uh first edition copies because that's something i'm kind of keep in the back of my mind when i go to antique stores or bookstores and stuff like that i try to find first editions of heir to the empire was um, it like online yeah online through facebook groups there's a facebook uh star a book ah shit hold on there's a of star wars there book is. club huh of course there is <laughs> right so there's a star wars book club on facebook there's everything i i've yeah. got to leave some of these groups because i'm just in so many of them i can't yeah. keep up mm -hmm. and then just in the club in the georgia page I, I posted that i was looking for them and a couple you know i found a couple of people that way that were selling them that had them uh, but yeah, it took me a while and it, it was, I would, I, I think the most I paid was maybe 20 bucks for oh. one of the books, maybe more, I, but yeah, they're really good at, you know, first edition hard copies. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. You got that. And then you got it signed, which is even better. Yeah. And I actually, um, Kevin J. Anderson, I think that's his name. Uh, yes. I met him, uh, Dutch had him at one of his shows and I didn't even think twice about it because we we had a fan table there uh, the, as a club. So I went down there and had the fan table going. And all of a sudden, when the doors open, 
just a line of people rushed to the author room and got him to sign stuff. And then I went in there and started talking to him about an hour later. And he said all his Star Wars books were sold out in like the first 10 minutes. And then as I'm looking through all those books, he had a set of, of X-Files books. Yeah, so I paid like 10 bucks for him to autograph some X-Files books. So I could just have them in my collection. And he actually autographed all of them kind of, um, you know, I want to believe and the truth is out there. And I forgot what he put on the third one, but it was, you know, inscribed them all. So it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, he um he writes for everything. Yeah, he he does all sci-fi. I have a signed poster from the Phasma book by Delia S. Dawson. Uh huh. I have a signed poster from her, but that's about it for signed autograph things of <laughs> authors for me. And it's I don't hunt them down. I'm bad, but you know it was freaking Timothy Zod. How could you not, you know, get an autograph from him or get him to sign a book, especially I, when you have time to prepare for it? Save Star Wars. He did. He freaking did. And that's uh he was at a panel and he when he that somebody had asked him, you know, what was your when you wrote those books, did you know what you were doing? And he said that he was approached by Lucasfilm and was like, We don't know if we have any fans out there, but will you write books? You know, will you do these books for us? You know, right. we, we have no clue what's out there, but please do it. And yeah, they saved Star Wars. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get into the topic of the week, man. Okay. So this week we're going to look at, uh-oh, I have a burp coming on. Uh-oh, do it. No, what are you no, drinking, Jake? Speaking of burps, what are you drinking? This is some whiskey and an Arnold Palmer mixed together. Man, look at you. How are you it's... getting, being a grown-up? And... Yeah, I got some <laughs> hair on my chest now. <laughs> Dude, I can't stand whiskey. I've tried. I've got a neighbor. My wife can drink whiskey. My neighbor drinks whiskey and he'll have like $200 bottles of whiskey on his, on his shelf. And I'm like, Jeez. don't even waste it with me, dude. Cause I, I can't stand it. But you know, I'm going back to my, uh, Abita Mardi Gras box is what I'm drinking right now. I bought uh, a couple of cases from a couple mm. of different people cause mm-hmm. it's a, it's a seasonal beer. So when it comes around, I got to stock up on it. Yeah. I like the, uh, you can tell the quality of scotch. Like I'll, I'll drink a, a high quality scotch, but nothing too expensive. Like a McKellen 12 year, is something that I would drink. I've tried getting some of the cheaper scotches, but it doesn't work out. It just doesn't taste good. I do have a Knob Creek. There was a weird thing that happened in New York City. Knob Creek had a, a Star Wars label on it. Yeah. It was only available in one store. And I saw some people picking that up. And I texted my uh, my stepbrother, my brother, no, stepbrother, and asked him if he can go to the store and get it. He's like, yeah, I work right next to it. So he went down, he bought a bottle for himself, he bought a bottle for me, and he sent it to me. So that was weird that they had a, a, a label like that. And it's not officially licensed, I don't think, either. Yeah, my understanding behind that is you could, you know, let's say I want to do a thousand bottle run. You yeah. they'll put whatever you want on that thousand bottle run. And apparently that's what the store did. And awesome. they they snuck it by Lucasfilm. Well, I have one that's still sealed and I don't plan on opening it, and I love it. That's an yeah. That's awesome, yeah. dude. So that's there, but yeah, this is just cheap whiskey, and it does its job. I just need a little bit, some Arnold Palmer, go straight into the bloodstream. I'm good. Oh, awesome. I'm drinking it out of a cheap plastic BB-8 cup, staying in theme here. Yeah. Oh shit! I know I keep going back to stuff, but I went to a friend's house last weekend, and uh, we're starting to drink, and we're starting, you know. I, so I grab a beer, and then I open their jar, I open their uh, cabinet to get a glass, because uh, you know beer always takes better. At least this beer, when you put it in a glass, it kind of opens it up a little bit. And they had a Burger King Lando Calrissian cup sitting there, and I'm like, this is the only opportunity I'm ever going to have to drink beer out of a Lando Calrissian. 80s burger king cup because i sure the hell ain't doing it out of mine right so it was it was just yeah it was weird this is one of those cheap 99 cent mugs that you would get off of walmart like in the party aisle right so no i i want to do it out of my lando kairosian mug but it's like if you're going to use a 20 30 dollar glass to drink beer out of i will too and if it breaks don't come calling him don't come crying to me right so that's but, what we're drinking. Yeah, prices. That's the drinking <laughs> segment of the show. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about prices here because it's insane and it's frustrating at times to be a modern collector. If you don't get something when it's first offered, you're going to have to pay 
double, maybe triple the, the, the amount. So what I went through, um, I used Action Figure 411 to help me with some of this. I went on eBay and did my best to try to average out some of these prices um, to try to get what the current offerings are for some of these. And, and then I did, it took me a while because I hit Excel, but I did, I'm so proud that I figured this out. I was able to figure out the percentage of increase which is insane. So I'm, I'm excited about that to share with everyone. So I guess I'm going to start with the black series because the percentage of increase on these are not as high in some of the vintage collection ones. And so let's see here, like Anakin Skywalker, the original one released, no, the archive series, excuse me, released in 2019 for 20 bucks is now selling for about 90 bucks. That's a 2,258% increase. Darth yeah. Maul, sorry. No, go for it, dude. You you better at this. Go for let it. Let me run. Let me run through run. some of these prices at the Black Series, and then we can talk about the imp the the increases. Um, so the original Dar Darth Maul, the Black Series with the red orange line. Same thing with Anakin. I'm going to talk about these two real quick. Both twenty dollars in 2013 for Darth Maul. 2014 for Anakin. Darth Maul selling for about eighty bucks. Anakin selling for about hundred and eight. And that's and that used to be about closer to 200 for Anakin, but when they released the archive series, that brought the price down a little bit. So some of these re-releases are helping prices for newer collectors trying to get these more accessible to them. But I mean, still like the Anakin that came out in 2019 is now 90 bucks. So take that with a grain of salt. Right. Clone Commander Cody from the or a blue line excuse me from 2015 selling for 19 bucks he's currently available if you can find them on like entertainment earth and the archive series he was going for about 200 bucks a couple months ago he's now 62 dollars the original release mandalorian first edition the white box i mean that one is 250 bucks that's about a six thousand percent increase i'm so mad because when um when those were released I went to my Walmart immediately and somebody beat me to it. Yeah. I had to work that morning, so I didn't get it. Um, I remember Clone Commander Rex, uh, Black Series number 59, who came out in 2018. He was at five below for five bucks, but he's selling for about 90 bucks right now. Jesus. The X Wing pilot um, from Celebration 2017. If I remember right, is selling for two thirteen. He was originally twenty four bucks. That's a three thousand four hundred twenty percent increase. Boba Fett, uh, the Boba Fett Black Series that looks like the Kenner Deco. Mm -hmm. He's selling for about two two forty, which is about a three thousand three thousand eight hundred thirty nine percent increase. I say about, and then I give an exact number. <laughs> Boba Fett and Han and Carbonite, which was a uh, uh, San Diego Comic Con, one of the first Black Series ever released for forty-five bucks. He's selling for about two hundred sixty bucks. It's a one thousand three hundred nineteen percent increase. Let's see, Jabba the Hutt, San Diego Comic Con. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't mention this one. <laughs> I bought this on Deal or No Deal from Glenn, <laughs> and I gave it to you at a really good deal because yeah. I knew all you had to do was drive twenty minutes to pick it up. Yeah. I appreciate it, but it's currently yeah. selling online for two hundred and two dollars. Four hundred eighty percent increase. I'm still happy because I I paid like nowhere close to what we I sold it to you for. So oh, good. Yeah, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I can't complain too bad. Let's see the um, there was an Entertainment Earth Clone Trooper set. There's four of them, and that sold for about a hundred bucks. It's currently selling for three hundred fifty bucks for a three. 350 percent increase i mean these are just just worth the investment alone if you want to just buy it and stash it in your closet for a while right captain rex which was tough to find he was like a hasbro convention exclusive in 2017 he was sold for 25 bucks and he's currently selling for about 160 bucks which is a 2530 percent increase let's see what else thrawn Oh, I missed that. And you have it. I don't have it. It's the Grand Animal Thrawn set from San Diego Comic Con for fifty bucks. It's currently selling close to two hundred bucks for a seven hundred thirty-five percent increase. Yeah. Um. Let's see what else. The Heroes of Endor, which I just recently got. That's that pack that kind of opens up with the Ewok on the speeder bike, Han and Leia kind of in front of the 
the Imperial doors going on Endor and then Luke kind of out in Endor alone with his lightsaber. That sold mid-2020 for $110. It's currently $153, which is a 127% increase. Yeah. Is that right? 127%? That can't be right. I, I don't math good, so I don't ask. Yeah. Me. That one might be wrong. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and that's basically the big ones. Um, I did like Dr. Afra, which is 20 bucks. She's currently selling for 87. BT1 is 50. Triple zero is 80. And it's just, if you don't get them when you want to get them, you're just not going. Qui Gon Jin from 2017 is about 80 bucks. And so they have a really quick turnaround on, on cost. Uh, increase in value i should say in cost um like the second they're not available anymore it's almost like they double in price right the one that really shocked me was the the vintage collection some of these prices are astronomical and part of the reason why we're doing this is the price of cara dune which i'm not convinced the cara dune increase right now is going to last but i do think the prices will come down a little bit but they won't be you know what is it Fifteen dollars right now to buy a Cara Dune. I don't think we're ever going to get that low. So right. I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm going to go through some of these real quick. Some of the big ones um, you would think like the Salacious Crumb because Salacious Crumb and Mouse Droid they came with a San Diego Comic Con exclusive pack, and I'm going to consider that like if you're going to get one of them, it's 130 bucks because the whole pack itself is probably selling close to two thousand dollars, but for a single item. They're selling for about 600 bucks each, which is only like a 300, 300% increase almost. Um, let's see. Ahsoka. Which Jesus is the, Christ. She's the big one. So one of the one of the um, online bids that I saw, she sold for $500, which is the 50,000% increase. But if I were to plug in, there's somebody offering it for 750 bucks, which is a 75,000% increase. Now, which which version is is that That's the, the twenty, the twenty twelve, and it kicks. Oh my god, it kicks my butt to think about. I walked into a so towards the end of the original run of the vintage collection, they decided to retire it for a little bit and bring it back at a later date. So these were the last ones offered, and they dumped them on Amazon. They were sold out within like twenty four hours. But my local comic book shop did order a box or two, and I walked in. And I was holding Ahsoka. I was holding Anakin and Obi-Wan from the Clone Wars. And I was living on a budget at the time. And I thought, nobody likes Ahsoka. Everyone loves Anakin and Obi-Wan. So I bought those two guys. And those guys are still worth a lot. But I put Ahsoka back. And, and that's probably one of my biggest regrets in the vintage yeah. collection line. Because I, I'm, I've, I'm priced out. And with, it, with um, Hasbro making that new version of Ahsoka. Soka, I don't feel like they're going to go back and do like the re-release fan exclusive channel version of her anytime soon. Yeah, and I saw Soka for two years ago selling for like a hundred bucks, and I was still, you know, that shocked me. Yeah, the Soka tax is higher than the Boba Fett tax, I would say. Yeah, but hell, even you know, I got to give it to Mandalorian because six months ago I didn't care who Soka was. Now I'm like, she's the kingpin. Uh, or the hinge pin or whatever that the whole star Wars universe is, is hung on right now. Yeah. Yeah. She's the heart of the universe. I think. Right. She's got, yeah. So VC one Dengar, the first vintage collection item released in the line sold for 10 bucks in 2010. Now he's selling for 150, which is a 15,000% increase. VC09 Boba Fett, when they have a couple of these, there's a version where it's um, an Empire version, and I think there's a Revenge of, the, Revenge of the Jedi version. Either way, they're selling for about 150 bucks. Jeez. And luckily, I have both of those. Awesome. Clone Commander Cody, VC19 for 10 bucks. He's selling for 180%, which is an 18,000% increase. Um, Kit Fisto VC29. We were just talking about him. He's selling for 130 bucks in 2010. He was 10 bucks. It's a 13,000 percent increase. Mace Windu VC35. Uh, he was selling for 10 bucks. He's now 120, which is a 12,000 percent increase. 
looking through some of the big ones so I don't have to go through and bore everyone because I know you have to visually imagine all these. VC-54, the ARC Trooper Commander, who is a, I um, can't find the, the picture of it. In 2011, he was 10 bucks. He's 160 bucks right now online. Dude, is somebody making like uh, shakes or something in your background? Is that me? I don't know. Okay, so you're hearing it too. Okay, cool. Hold on. Hold on. I, it's no big deal. I'm just, I'm hearing it. I'm trying to figure out what it oh, is. Oh, it is me. I have my <laughs> window open. Hold on. <laughs> it's an air. <laughs> okay, the window's closed. I even checked my cameras. I'm like, no, I my wife's sitting. I thought that was you. On... Yeah. I thought maybe you had your door open and someone was working outside. Oh my. No. That's, I'm sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> it's good to know that this this microphone picks up a lot. So if if right now the wife and the daughter are out shopping, but if they were home, I'd have to close the door or something like that because yeah. it could probably pick up the TV. So let me start this over again. VC-64, which was Slave Leia, or as they kind of call her now, Hut Slayer Leia. She's selling for 200 bucks. She was originally 10 bucks in 2011, and that's a 20,000% increase. And I think part of that, part of what's driving that is that um, Lucasfilm doesn't want to release that version of Leia anymore. I'm truthfully kind of surprised they still call Boba Fett's ship the Slave One. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. Um, maybe because maybe because there's nothing attached to to that. Because I got a personalized license plate, and I thought about making it the, just saying Slave One, mm -mm, and mm -mm. my wife looked at me, and the lady at the DMV looked at me, and they were like, "No, no, no you're not, not doing not that. down here. No, no <laughs> don't do that." Not going to work. Not going right. to pass. Um, some of the other ones, let's see. Bastilla Shan, which is a um, a Jedi from one of the expanded universes in 2011. She was 10 bucks. Now she's selling for 117 Grand Moff Tarkin, 2012, was selling for 10 bucks. He's 135 which is a 13,000% increase. Starkiller from the Force, Un Force Unleashed game. In 2012, he was selling for 10 bucks. Now he's selling for close to 150 bucks. Shea Vizsla, um, who's, uh, I guess, an expanded universe bounty hunter. I'm not exactly sure what she's from. She had she had the Star Wars logo with the expanded universe on the card, like where the title of a movie would go. She sold for 10 bucks back then, 2012. Now she's selling for about 240, which is 23 per. 23,000% increase. And, and the crazy thing is like for the Shays, Shea Vizsla that I don't know who she is. I can walk into Second Chance store right now, the toy store, and buy the um, vintage vintage version of Han Solo in the trench coat for 175 So some of these vintage collection figures are actually more than Return of the Jedi vintage figures, which is crazy to me. Yeah. Um, and because they're not that old, and so I don't know. Like, I guess there's it's a su supply and demand problem. If you want to have, if you want to be part of this vintage collection line, and they're really cool figures that look like the old figures that we used to get, but these have more detail, higher articulation. It's very expansive. I mean, we cover everything from Star Wars to the expanded universe video games with Force and Leash, Star Killer guy. You know, it's a pretty comprehensive collection, and maybe that's part of the problem is that people want to get in. The Republic Trooper from the Expanded Universe was selling for 20, uh, 10 bucks in 2012. He's now going for 150. Um, Clone Commander Rex. So this is one that is just recently out, VC-182. He's just kind of um, came out in 2020 for 13 bucks. He's currently selling for about 20 Mandalorian is full Beskar is selling for 20. Same thing with Moff Gideon, the armor. Um, Ray from The Rise of Skywalker, who came out in what, 2019? It's currently selling for about 120 bucks, which is insane in a year to have that, that price go up. And it's Ray to make it even worse. Yeah. <laughs> Ray Skywalker. <laughs> Then finally, the last one that I wanted to mention, I have a lot more and I can run through these numbers, but I don't want to bore the hell out of people. It's just interesting to, to see the turnaround. I've kind of I'm beating a dead horse at this point. Just interesting to see that 
you know, like I mentioned before, they stop selling these things. The, the next, the next month, they double in price almost. The Razor Crest, which was three fifty, is already selling on eBay for about seven seventy five, which is a sixty three percent increase. And that that personally that blows that blows my mind because are these people just selling their pre orders? Yes, that's got to be what they're doing. Um, that's crazy. Yeah. So. I don't know if I'm right with these percentages now that I'm looking at it because 350, it should be like a hundred percent increase, whatever. Pay no attention to my percentages because I hate Excel and I could be wrong, but the prices are a legit and 775 for the razor crest. You're selling your pre-order. So when somebody gets it, they're just going to ship it right back out to you. That's like the sale barge. If I would have realized the sale barge was going to sell for $1,000, I'd have bought two yeah. and paid for both of them. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what I did. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't want to put myself out that much. I mean, it was a big risk to buy. I thought, well, it's not a big risk, but it's just a financial strain to buy two sale barges for $1,000. I didn't want to do that again with the Razor Crest because I sold the second sale barge. I didn't want to have to sell the second Razor Crest, so but that's probably the ship that's going to increase because increase more than the sail barge because everyone loves the Mandalorian right now. Right. And it blew up. So why not? It's so heartbreaking. Yes. And it was like the week <laughs> or two after that whole campaign concluded. That's what I find hilarious. It's just like, yeah, right after the, the thing deleted and boom, there, there it goes. It's blown up. Yeah. So that's what I have for the modern pricing um, and I think again, it's a su supply and demand thing. They're, they're going back when they go back and re-release some of these to the exclusive fan, fan channels, like the um, Clone Trooper, the Clone Wars, Anakin Skywalker that they just recently released was selling close to two hundred bucks, but he since dropped down to about fifty. Pretty much the same kind of card. It's the back that changes a little bit because they do modernize modernize them. The back will kind of show like like in the vintage versions of these figures they would show like what else was available at the time and so with the anakin skywalker that they just re-released it's more modern and they're showing more of the modern figures like they would show the mandalorian as one of the figures that you could possibly purchase whereas if you were to go back to the original version of the card it's going to show some of those older figures so that's really the only thing that's changed in these figures the vintage collection also is just, there is so many different variants throughout this whole thing. Some of them were intentional. Some of them weren't. I think it's Barada that's got a green bandana versus a red one. Like the initial versions were all green, but then later they corrected it to red. Uh -huh. VC 12, I think it's 12, 13, excuse me, Darth Vader. And I kind of mentioned this last time. He was surfing on a, a, one of the droids on Mustafar. There's a version in the pill that's got Anakin on it. Um, the first 20 or so of these figures had a foil, uh, what do you want to call it, foil detail to the race track that goes around the car where it says Star Wars. There was versions where they would have that glossy foil on it. There was versions without. So if you were able to find one, you know, I have a couple of them. I don't need to be completist and have one version with a foil, one version without. But some of that does determine cost. As I kind of mentioned with VC09, there's the um, Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. There's also a revenge version of that Boba Fett. So some of that kind of stuff to take into account. Um, Cara Dune, just to go back to the to where we started with the carbonized version of Cara Dune, who was, who was selling just this year for $18 is currently selling for $63. Jesus. So I think, I think eventually that's going to come down a little bit. I don't think it's going to stay high. I think there's a lot of um, uh, attention and um, there's always that race to, like you were mentioning about Carrie Fisher and some of those prices going up after she died. I think there's a little bit of that going on and I think it will come back down at some point. Right. Yeah, because there's always the initial rush. It's like with Pops. I've seen one. It releases, uh, you know, very limited edition, and it'll shoot up to $200. And then you give it three or four months, and it's back down to 
you know, like a hundred, which is still crazy for something you're paying $25 for and it's a hundred dollars. Yeah. But um, have you seen with these, uh, cause I know with the, when they re-released the power of the force two stuff, you know, they had all the uh, shit you had the, you know, like the Luke Skywalker, it had a long saber, but then in a short or a short saber, but in a long uh, bubble and it, it does it does it get crazy like those were or is it more i guess more uh controlled it's more controlled it wasn't like that like i think back then that was a running change and the lightsabers is just way too big back then and so they they did shrunk it shrink it down but then in the process there was short sabers and long saber trays it's almost like they mass produced all these trays and they had too many of them so they stopped making the long version of the saber they put them in the short they put the short saber into the long tray. So there was like air gaps in, in the bubble itself. Is that making sense? No, I'm just trying to figure out how to explain it because I can see it in my head. I just don't know if I'm visually or, right. Or no, communicating it was, it right. But yeah, you had like two or three inches where the, you know, imagine a bubble where they had a saber that was, you know, let's just use number. We'll use easy numbers. A saber was six inches long mm-hmm. uh, when they first came out. And then when they redid them, they were four inches long, but you had that extra two inches yeah. of tray space, you know? Uh, so, you know, you had a six inch saber that was in that bubble originally, but now they put a two inch saber, or, I mean, a four inch saber in there. And you had that two inch blank space that you yeah, were trying to make up. I remember like with the Bubba Fett's, you know, one was a half circle and one was a full circle and none had no circles and half circle. Yeah. That's what I have. So, and that's the that's the reason why I stopped opening all these figures is because I opened <laughs> that one. And back at the Power of the Force two time, that was like the Wild West because Star Wars was returning back in action figure form, and people were buying them left and right, and they thought these were going to be the same as the vintage stuff. And yeah. So yeah. So the the half half moon Boba Fett's were worth like one hundred seventy five bucks, something like that. But a lot of the vintage collection now they don't have as many running changes. It seems like they're pretty good at locking in what they want to make before they make it. There are some exclusive. I don't know if they're exclusive. There are some like this new Boba Fett that's being released right now, as we speak, it's got the yellow card back, but there is a version where it's orange and close up and that was intentional. So there's only about, I don't know, a thousand, 2000 of those. So they do still do it. It's just not as common as it, used to be when they first started with the vintage collection crazy i i'm gonna go to a star trek thing because i was watching uh if you guys haven't seen toys that made us on netflix watch them because all of them are good even the my little pony and barbie one is is just incredible the he-man one's the funniest because there's just so much the lore of who invented he-man and these guys are at their throat you know at each other's throats saying i invented he-man and they're no i invented he-man and you know um but going back to the Star Trek one, they had they had gotten to a point Playmates had where they uh, released like 1,900 figures, and people that were completists couldn't get a hold of these 1,900 figures. So they were it, it was the downfall all the uh, downfall of the line because they were doing such a crazy uh, limited edition stuff. Yeah. So you were making like 1,900 people happy, but the other million that was buying your product were pissed because they couldn't get a hold of these 1,900 figures, so they quit buying your product. I kind of feel like that's the boat that uh, Funko's in right now. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why I gave up. Like, I got the Smuggler's Bounty stuff. I think I came late into the Funko game by the time it started hitting my radar. So I got into the Smuggler's Smuggler's Bounty, which was the mail at home they would send you some Funko in the mail, which was fun because the kids enjoyed opening it. And my son and I would look at it and say, oh, what's this? And what's this? Because sometimes they would offer socks. Um, I have a, a Han Solo and Greedo salt pepper shaker. So, I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff in it, but trying to track down all the Funko stuff is just damn near impossible. Yeah. Well, that's why, I mean, because like the the office, you'll you'll look and they'll re- they're releasing one figure you know, like a Dwight figure that in uh, Recyclops and they released five of them, but then they released this special one that's, you know, Emerald City Comic Con. And yeah, well, I mean, because they, they did the blue chrome figures for Celebration that were 2,500. Yeah. And it was funny as crap because TK, Jason TK had uh, won the lottery and he was all pissed. I'm like, dude, I will pay you 25 bucks a piece 
for those figures, just go wait in line for me and I'll, you know, I'll pay you for your time. So I bought a couple off of him. But the Boba Fett was a $15 figure and it's $300. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a passionate fan base, which is great for Funko. Right. But it's just a pain in the ass. And trying to just track down all the Hasbro stuff, Kenner stuff, Micro Machines is just tough right. as it is. I don't need to add to my stress personally. Um, yeah, Funko finally pissed me off. And I know I've, I keep saying it, but they, they pissed me off. So I'll keep the, the ones that I have and I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. So that's all I had. Did you have anything else? I had, I had a couple of different things. Okay. Um, you had some Rebels, right? Yeah, I, I kind of looked at the Rebels stuff um, just to kind of, yeah, you know, the little bit I looked at, like the three pack, the two packs of Rebels, the the Chopper. Um, one, uh, what are, Chopper is going for like 50 bucks and that was a $10 figure when you could find it. Uh, so it's, one. and it's just keeps going up and up. Uh, the Vader and Ahsoka two pack, that's going for around 30 bucks. And then that was a, I think I bought mine at five below um because ahsoka's you know thankfully she's been in the mandalorian and mm -hmm. uh you know her lore's come back mm -hmm. so she's going for 30 bucks uh zeb and chopper that's hitting 50 dollars uh the galactic heroes ghost that was i saw that for nine dollars at walmart in the clearance rack and i'm like i don't need as awesome as it is i don't need it and it's it's hitting 80 to 100 dollars on ebay right now wow yeah that's insane. It really is. And it's just for the popularity. People, I think people are discovering these shows yeah. and they're like, I have to have the, the, the product. Yeah, um, it's all, and, it's huh? all on Disney plus. So yeah. Yeah, they're rediscovering it. Lego ghost. It, you know, was a $90 piece when it came out and it's going for 400 unopened. Yeah. Uh, that's Lego's a different a ball of wax. I mean, yeah. that, that increases more than the price of gold. Mm-hmm. People will buy those, put them on a shelf, and then sell them a couple of years later. And I've seen it where uh, I was in a Walmart, and they were just marked down the Legos, and there were a couple of collectors, scalpers, whatever you want to call them, that were just buying them all up because they were like, they just marked them down 50%, and I could turn around and sell them for retail and make my money back. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Legos is, yeah, wow. <laughs> I've learned my lesson with Legos. Uh, when I see it on the shelf, I need to just buy it and even, you know, just stick it on the, stick it in my collection somewhere. I wish I could. I got too much stuff. Yeah. I, I, but I'm, I'm buying the stuff that I like. I, I'll buy, um, you know, the Mandalorian stuff. I'll buy the Boba Fett stuff. Uh, and just kind of leave it at that. I wish I would have bought the Razor Crest, but I just couldn't bring, it was $130. Mm-hmm. Uh, item and it's it's like going for 160 to 200 right now which isn't you know 160 isn't that big of an increase but it's a 30 dollar increase yeah um you know and then i've got the like the 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 helmets we were talking about the hasbro black series helmets yeah the the bubble fett retailed for 125 yeah and it's going between 200 and 250 that's insane because you can get it on entertainment earth right now as a pre-order can you really yeah Wow. They're making a revert and not a reversion, but a re-release, I should say. See, and that that increase makes me want to sell my even no matter how much I love that Black Series helmet. <laughs> yeah. It's like, man, if I can get two hundred dollars out of that helmet, even yeah. you know, why why would I hold on to it? Um and the same thing with the um uh, hold on, that I do the the white, the prototype helmet, it's doing the same thing. It's just yeah. it's crazy how those things are happening. Yeah, I didn't even mention that the helmets, but I thought like the Kylo Ren one is selling for like five hundred bucks sealed. The thing with the Kylo Ren helmet is it's such a good helmet; people are using it to join the five hundred first. Oh, so you can't so, do that with like the Darth Vader one because it's got a button on the side for sound, right? Which Darth Vader doesn't have, so five hundred first won't approve it. Yeah, so the the yeah that's the thing that the Kylo Ren helmet has that yeah people are using it to join the five hundred first. I've seen people like they'll take the prototype fed bucket and they're painting it and to me i'm like why am i gonna spend i can go buy a a custom helmet for yeah, or you know a cast helmet for a 100 bucks why am i gonna waste my money on the on the yeah. retro or the prototype and and do that another thing i wrote down because i actually i bought one at retail and sold it because i was you know you you reevaluate your collection every now and again especially when you're when you're hunting stuff 
um, the Vader, Darth Vader prototype retro line was like 14 bucks retail. They're selling for 75 to 100 right now. The, the one that looks like a prototype? The one that's red, orange, and green and stuff. Yeah, the rainbowed one. Yeah. 170? Selling, yeah, they're selling for 75 to $100. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I know Tim Connor has like every variant, every configuration of all of those. Dude, his, oh, I didn't realize Tim's, the extent of his collection. He just, yeah. he's, he's just joined Instagram and is starting to post his collection up and yeah. his collection is insane. It's very special. <laughs> I watched him. He posted the Vans and Vans released Star Wars shoes about two years ago or actually longer than that. And he has every one of them. Yeah, I need to go over to his house. He keeps inviting me over, and I, and then just life happens, and it's just like I forget. Yeah. To to message him, and then and then I'm I was grown up, I was raised not to invite myself over to someone's house, and so I feel awkward saying, "Hey, can I come over?" Right. And I think it was either him or you or somebody invited me over, and it just like you said, life, life got in the way. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, vans. What's cool? Um, you're speaking of oddball stuff. Vans, when they did those shoes, they got with Funko and released a Vader and a Boba Fett wearing Vans holding skateboards. And those figures are going, they were giveaways when you bought the shoes. Those shoe figures are going for like two to three hundred dollars for the set right now. I don't know if I've ever seen those. I've got them. You don't have Maybe to. I did then. I just, they're just not popping in my head right now. Yeah, they're kind of, I, I don't have them uh, prominently displayed in my collection. I mean, they're there, but they're kind of like behind behind some other stuff yeah. on my FET, you know, my bookcase of FET. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were giving them away. And I actually, when I uh, I went to the Vans at Discover, or the one up here in Town Center, and they had cases of them. And like a week later, I had went and said, hey, my daughter was really mad at me because I didn't bring her a set of those figures. Can I get a set? And they go, sure. Damn. Just hand me a set, you know, hands me hand me a set of those figures. So always ask. Yeah. Doesn't hurt. Mm -mm. So yeah, right. prices on modern, modern collecting is, is insane for the secondary market. I should say prices yeah. are insane. It, it is. Um, and truthfully, what you were saying about the, uh, you know, the vintage stuff, I would rather spend my money on vintage, but you're, you're getting to a point where you can only collect so much vintage and then you get into the prototypes and the unproduced stuff which mm -hmm. you know for you go from it being a 150 dollar piece to being a 1500 dollar piece like mm -hmm. that yeah yeah i was sitting on one of the panels in celebration they were showing the price of the 12 back luke throughout the years and force awakens really just pushed up the prices of all of the old vintage figures and he's selling for about three thousand but then back in 20 years ago he's only 300 bucks dude i will tell you when i i just i can right when me and my wife first started dating what and i could just do it because it, i i just I, that's sort of a you know a milestone in your life mm -hmm. when you first start dating someone so you can kind of judge you know everything by that date uh, about six months after that i started rebuying my figures because at the point i i um yeah you know it was at that point in your life where you're like okay i'm ready to start rebuying stuff I was finding stuff on, on Craigslist. I first collection I really bought was like 40 or 50 figures, the Darth Vader case weapons. It had a few ships. Uh, it had the Jabba, Jabba the Hutt was only missing like one piece of Jabba the Hutt. I paid 50, 60 bucks for it. Those days are long gone, my friend. They certainly are. And I had about a run six months to a year where it was like that. And I wasn't hitting it hard, but I was hitting it hard enough to be like, all right, I want to redo what I had as a, as a kid. And I wish I would have just gone, you know, your, you know, wishes and what is it called? Wishes and nuts. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, you welcome know, to my world. Yeah. <laughs> la, 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 la. La, la. Uh, Jin Jarin. No. <laughs> Din -din -jarin. I was thinking about that the other day, how to, to warm up for the show. Din Djarin didn't die on Dantooine. <laughs> that or have a beer at nine o'clock in the morning, man. Maybe. Jeez. But uh, yeah, it, it's one of my, 
I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have kept going with that because my collection would have been insane, but that's also how I built my collection was, you know, I was finding these good deals and then flipping them and sell, still sell, passing on the good deals to other people and, you know, buying, buying lots. The craziest lot I ever got was somebody was selling a bunch of figures. He had a millennium Falcon with a training ball and he was selling a total fig, and I paid like 250 bucks for it. And then when I show up, he's like, here, do you want all these GI Joe figures here? Do you want this? Do you want that? And, you know, he just one of these guys that just wants to get rid of the stuff. Yeah. And it. yeah, I, I've got a picture of me and Kaya, which is my daughter in our old living room, just surrounded by all these toys that I bought from this lot. And it's just, it was yeah, a the crazy memory. Are gone. Like, yeah. I, like Yak Face himself is, is climbing. I th- there was a day when I could get one for 300 bucks. Still don't have one, but he's going for about 600. Is he really? Somewhere in between 300 and 600, depending on the quality. I thought I saw someone trying to sell one for 800 bucks on Facebook, uh, which I think is a little too much. He'd have to be graded. Yeah. Dude. I, I would sell my graded one. I mean, I've already put a, I don't want to sell it price on my graded one for a thousand. If somebody <laughs> walks in my house and throws a thousand dollars on the table, they're walking out with my graded fa- uh, yak face. Yeah. But I know I can take that, you know, three, four hundred dollars and buy another one. And then I'll right. still have five or six hundred bucks. Right. Um, but yeah, I've seen uh, we had a buddy in the club. He had traded a uh, he would had this issue trading the card. He was trying to sell a card back and somebody he knew what the card back was working. And somebody offered him a graded yak face and he was like, should I buy it? And we're like, should should I do pull the trigger? And we were like, pull the trigger, dude, because that card is worth four hundred bucks. The yak face is worth like six. Yeah, and he literally he put it at Toylana in one of in, in a buddy's booth, and it sold like the minute it hit the booth, the minute it hit the shelf, somebody bought it for six hundred bucks. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> it's insane these prices, dude. And I felt bad because I I paid like I think I paid two and a quarter for my yak face with no yeah. weapon, and it was a oh shit moment for me because that's the most I've ever paid for a figure. Yeah. And I remember texting my wife and she was, cause I bought it at celebration at one of the room sales. And she was even like, Oh my God, you bought one. So it was, it was a milestone moment that. And when I bought my pop-up R2, cause uh, the pop-up R2 was the finish of my 92 run. Yeah. I think I have about 30 or 40 of the 92. I don't know. Yeah. And those just keep dude, the prices of that. You know, it's a hundred dollars for a freaking Luke farm bar right now. Yeah. I remember paying twenty dollars for it and having my pick, you know, of, of which one I wanted. Damn, those days are gone. Yeah. All right. So I think we bored everybody enough. Yeah. <laughs> I think we good this episode. We, awesome. So we good. Cool. Jason, right. enjoy the uh, the rest of your day, man. You too. All this right. is the way, sir. This is the way.